Christ again. Alleluia, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore, singing forevermore. Alleluia, amen. Thank you for joining us to sing this morning. Our next hymn is 330. Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love, at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and Stand up for Jesus 618. Stand up for Jesus. Oh, yeah. 
Stand up for Jesus. Hymn number 100. Good morning to all. Good morning to all. Hope you're doing very well this morning. And uh, we are always welcome to you the special day of this week, week of Spiritual Emphasis Day. This is a very important week for us. Those who are here physical, those who are watching online, this is the week is very important for us to learn about the God's Word. The chaplaincy department welcomes you, everyone, for this day three worship. May, the, may you feel at the feet of Jesus. You are most welcome, students, faculty, staffs, administrators, and all the well wishers those who are watching online, you are welcome for this congregation this morning. Now, we all stand and opening song, 511. We all raise the song number 511. The praise team, please come. Let's all rise. 511, I know whom I have believed in.
Loving Father who lives above, dear Lord, we are so thankful for this day. Indeed, it is a gift, it is a privilege to be in your presence one more time. You've allowed us to gather here as a family, Baraton family, to worship you and to seek thy face. One more time, Father, we plead for your presence to be with us. In a special way, Father, you've gathered us here with one mission that we may contemplate on your word. As your servant will be standing, oh Father, I pray that you may touch his brain cells and his lips that he may deliver what you intended him to deliver this morning. In a special way, I plead with you that any form of destruction, oh Father, that may bar us from hearing that blessed message this morning, please take it away. And I pray that after the battles have been fought and after all the victories have been won, we long to reign with you in eternity. Now, but with us, I begin this program till the end. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The chaplaincy welcome everyone to day three of Wose. And our today's title, The Sycamore Tree in Jericho. Day three, Monday morning, our title of this lesson this morning, The Sycamore Tree in Jericho. Announcement, Wose will continue this evening from 5.50 p.m. Let us keep, please keep time. OSE camp meeting will climax with baptism on Sabbath, 21st October, 2023. All those who wish to make a public declaration, Professor said, is all categories is fulfilled. It started with a master, uh, mister, then I believe that it's become elder, and after that it's completed PhD, it's become doctor, then he was worked as a professor, and main thing, is ordinary pastor. That is the one is very important. So pastor, doctor, professor Richard Sabun is going to give us this morning. The message is going to be the sycamore tree in Jericho. Thank you so much. Good morning. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, and it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I'll repeat, Luke, chapter 19, verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. May the word be blessed.
Uh, good morning. We will perform a song in Kiswahili and it is a song 099 but we will perform it in a different tune. Eh? So that is it. Twende kwa Yesu mimi nawe njia hatu onya tuijue imo chuo ni na mwenyewe hapa hasema njo na fura tutaiona nyoyo iki Taka ta sana kwa ko moko zikuona na na milele milele kuka wana na waje atwambia furai ni kwa kusikia ndiye moko ziwe tuasa na tumti njoni na fura tutaiona nyoyo ikitakata sana kwa ko moko zikuona na na milele milele kuka wango tena ni leo yupo siki sasa na asema po huru maza kezi twita po Ewe kijana njo Na fula tutaiona Nyoyo iki takata sana Kwa ko moko ziku onana Na milele milele kuka na fura tutaiona Mnyoyo iki takata sana Kwa ko moko ziku onana Na milele milele kuka Na fura tutaiona Kwa ko moko ziku onana Na milele milele kuka We praise God for that wonderful song. Yes, we need to go to Jesus Christ in our lives. Good morning, everyone. A full house today. Good morning. Did you have a good sleep? I did. I went to bed at about 10 p.m. I woke up at 2 and I couldn't sleep. You know, when you come to another side of this globe and in the rotation of the globe on its axis, somehow you have to adjust. And so I pray to the Lord because once I woke up, you know, there were so many things coming to my head. 
I prayed to the Lord. I really prayed, Lord, give me good sleep. I didn't know what time I went to sleep again. I slept and I was sleeping very deeply. And later, I came to know that our chaplain knocked my door two times, but it didn't affect me. So I make a conclusion. When you pray to the Lord and God give you a good sleep, even the chaplain cannot wake you up. <laughs> when God answers your prayers, no one can disturb it. Amen. Are you praying for something? Many of you are praying for your success. If you pray to the Lord and you give your lives to Him, He will answer your prayer. And when your prayer is answered, it is fixed. No one can disturb it. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we invite the Holy Spirit to guide us in reading your words, in meditating the message from you. May you empower me with the Holy Spirit that I'm not standing here alone, that it is you that will speak through me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for announcing the title of our message, uh, Elder Paul Francis. Thank you so much. And that is what? The sycamore tree, where? Then you know already the sermon. What is that about? When you have sycamore tree, it is in Jericho. What is that story about? Zacchaeus. If you have your Bibles with you, electronic Bible or printed Bible, let us turn our Bibles into Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. He entered and he was passing through Jericho. When someone says, I'm passing through the University of Eastern Africa Baraton campus, what does it mean? It means... The university is not your destination because you are only passing through. So Jesus was not going to Jericho. He was only passing through Jericho. And when Jesus was only passing through Jericho, we ask two questions. Jesus where are you coming from? Where did you start your journey? And where are you going? What is the destination of your journey? That you are passing through Jericho. In order to know the answer, we have to open our Bibles. And I discovered the answer. It is in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. You see, I can, I can listen the, the flip of the papers of the Bible, you see. The sounds is uh, very unique. It is different from the sounds of the math textbook or chemistry when you open it. You, you know, you can tell when someone opens his or her Bible. Let us read from verse 28. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah. talking with Jesus, the question, what are they talking about with Jesus? What is so important? 
what is so important, what is the agenda that Moses and Elijah came. They were already in heaven. They are in heaven now. And they came to talk with Jesus. Look what the Bible says. Who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. The death of Jesus Christ. The salvation of humankind. The work of redemption is very important that Jesus could not be left alone. That the heaven sent Moses and Elijah to talk about this very important matter. The plan of salvation has been the main or the major agenda of heaven for the salvation of myself and for yourself. And then, it says, he was about to accomplish where? At Jerusalem. And verse 37 says, Now it happened on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain. So they were on one mountain, and they came down from that mountain, and on that mountain, Jesus was glorified. He was transfigured. He talked with Moses and Elijah. And after that, they went down from that mountain, heading where? Jerusalem. What is in Jerusalem? There is another mountain in Jerusalem waiting for Jesus. And that is Mount Calvary, Golgotha. So Jesus was making his journey, starting from the Mount of Transfiguration to the Mount of Crucifixion. And on the way from the Mount of Transfiguration to the Mount of Crucifixion, he was passing through Jericho. And there in Jericho, he met someone by the name Zacchaeus. Actually, I would like to expose a little bit more about the journey of Jesus just to give us really an evidence from the scripture that I'm not making up stories that Jesus really made his way to Jerusalem. But I think it will not take much time if I bring you to several Bible texts just to demonstrate that he was really on the journey of mission. Let us turn our Bible into Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, then he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Chapter 13, verse 22. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Chapter 17, verse 11. The Bible says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Chapter 18, verse 31. The Bible says, 1831. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. So he started his journey after talking with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. He really set up to Jerusalem and he was passing through Jericho. Let us turn to our major chapter and that is Luke chapter 19. Verse 1 already told us he entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but he could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. Why is that Luke was very specific in describing this person? 
You know, the authors of the Gospels were very selective when they put materials into their writing. In fact, John says at the last chapter of the Gospel of John, there are so many signs and wonders that Jesus performed, but if I had to put everything in my book, the heaven cannot contain everything that Jesus has performed. But in so many things in the ministry of Jesus, that sometimes the author of the, 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 the Gospels would not even mention the name of a person who encountered Jesus. But this time, the name is mentioned, and it is not only the name. It is also a description, a very detailed description, description about who Zacchaeus is. Number one, what does the Bible say? He is a chief tax collector. Number two, he is rich. Number three, he wanted to see Jesus, but he could not. There was a desire to see Jesus, but he could not. Why? Number four, he was short in stature. Why are these? You know, when you are reading your Bible, you need to see the surrounding of a text in order to see some more information to help you understanding the very text that you are reading. He is a chief tax collector. This is in chapter 19. Now, let us try to see what is in chapter 18. If you have your Bible with you, turn with me to chapter 18. In chapter 18, please try to find, is there a story in chapter 18 about tax collector? Now that I have already known your name, Elder Zuko Mafani, do you find something there? There is a parable about tax collector and, and Pharisee. What do they do? They came to the temple and they were praying. And look at this wonderful, quote unquote, wonderful prayer of the Pharisee. He said like this, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Have you ever prayed like that? Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector, he was aware that the tax collector was standing behind him. Lord, I thank you. I'm not like that person standing at the back. And he added, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. You count how many times of self-description that he made. He says, I'm not like other men. I'm not extortioner. I'm not unjust. I'm not adulterer. I'm not like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Seven things. For the Pharisees, when you have this number seven, what is the prayer about? Lord, I thank you because I'm perfect. I'm perfect, Lord. Thank you so much. And then this tax collector prayed too. The Bible says in verse 13, and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I think our theology students would like to see their uh, Greek uh, uh, New Testament. And they would discover that there is a definite article before the word sinner. It is not a sinner, it is the sinner. So he was praying, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. I'm not only one of the sinners in this world, I am the sinner. If that Pharisee, in his prayer, talking about injustice, 
talking about adulterer, talking about not faithful in paying tithe. I am that sinner that he was talking about. Have mercy on me, Lord. That was his prayer. For the Pharisees, don't talk about heaven when you talk about the tax collector. There is no place for a tax collector in heaven. No place. Jesus was criticized because he was eating together with the sinners and with tax collectors. No place for tax collectors in heaven. Now look, who is Zacchaeus? Chapter 19. He is a chief. Chief tax collector. Chief tax collector means the boss of all the tax collectors. If there are like 100 tax collectors in Jericho, he was the chief. So he would receive some deposit and some, you know, payment, certain percentage. In addition to what he was collecting more than what's supposed to be collected. He is the chief tax collector. Therefore, if it is difficult for a tax collector, if there is no place for a tax collector in heaven, then there is certainly no place at all for a chief tax collector in heaven. No salvation. But he is described not simply as a tax collector. What is the next description here? He is, he is rich. Still in chapter 18, do you find something about rich? A rich person in chapter 18, do you find something, students? A rich young ruler. He came to Jesus and asked, Lord, what shall I do that I will have eternal life? Obey the commandments of God. And Jesus was correct. That obeying the commandments of God is very important. Jesus was right. But this young ruler said, Lord, if it is only about the Ten Commandments since my childhood, I have obeyed the Ten Commandments. What is more? There is one thing more. Go and sell all your properties and belongings and then share with the poor and then come and follow me. Did he do that? The Bible says he went away because he was very rich. And Jesus says in verse 24, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. If it is already very difficult for a chief tax collector to go to heaven, now being rich, it is double. He is a chief tax collector and he is rich. And Jesus himself says, it is very difficult for rich men to go to heaven, to enter into heaven. And so Zacchaeus is. He wanted to see Jesus, but he could not. Is there a story in chapter 18 about those who would like to come and see Jesus, but they cannot? The little children. The parents brought them to come to Jesus. But the disciples blocked them that they could not have access to Jesus Christ. It was difficult for little children. They were not for Jesus, according to the disciples. Then you have chief tax collector. And then you have these little children. They were small in stature, the little children, just like Zacchaeus. And you have Zacchaeus as someone who is very rich, much richer, I believe, than this rich young ruler. Is there any other story about those who would like to see but they cannot? The story of the blind man. He wanted to see but he couldn't. 
He was shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People said, Shh, don't shout, don't make noise. And he shouted all the more. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. It is very difficult. And all of this, they are all together in one person by the name who? Zacchaeus. It is impossible for Zacchaeus, according to all of this, to enter into the kingdom of God. Is there something that is difficult in our life that we think, no, it is impossible for me to come to Jesus? Drugs? Alcohol? Pornography? Games addiction? What else? That Satan would whisper to your heart, my friend, don't ever have any idea that you can be saved. Looking at yourself, it is impossible for you. And so Zacchaeus made a choice. That day, he was informed that Jesus was passing through Jericho. He went ahead. He climbed the sycamore tree in Jericho. He was trying to, to hide himself, but at the same time, although he would like to hide himself, he would like to be able to identify Jesus. Many people would like to hide themselves. But you cannot hide yourself from Jesus. Jesus was passing. I was imagining now, I'm, I'm imagining now that Zacchaeus was there on the tree. When Jesus called his name, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I think he was almost falling down. He was shocked. Come down, Jesus says. Because today I want to go to your house. Zacchaeus came down. Many people were murmuring because Jesus would like to spend time with a sinner. They complained he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, verse 8, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore for fault. What is the rule in the Old Testament when you take some, something from others or you damage something that belongs to others? How many fault have you returned? How many fault? General rules, two faults. But Zacchaeus promised, I will return how many faults? Four faults. There is a story in the Old Testament about someone who would like to, to ask to return four fault. David, after he committed adultery with Bathsheba, Nathan the prophet came. And told a story about someone who is very rich, but he would take the only lamb belong to a poor neighbor. Before Nathan was able to finish his story, David said, That man has to die. That man has to return what he has taken from his neighbor how many times? Four times. So when Zacchaeus says, Lord, I will return four times, in other words, he was saying, Lord, if you would like to find someone, a sinner in the Bible, that I'm like that person, I'm like David. David is a very famous name. Even a blind man would shout to Jesus, Son of David, in Jericho. And so Jesus said, to Zacchaeus, chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. Today, salvation has come to this house, 
because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Who was lost? Zacchaeus was lost. It was impossible for him to be saved. It was impossible. But Jesus found him. Even among the crowds of thousands of people, he knows someone seated there among the students of Baraton who needs to be saved. Even among the crowds of the people in Jericho, he knows Zacchaeus is a need of salvation. He cannot hide, and you cannot hide yourself from God. If he is seeking for you, if he is looking for you, it is because he loves you. Choose you this day, whom you will serve, because he is looking for you. He knows where you are. He knows your past. He knows your presence. He knows your future. He knows yourselves. He knows your hearts. He knows your struggles. Everything about you. He knows everything. And the Bible says, The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is a key text, actually, in the Gospel of Luke. A key text that even in the book of Luke, you have a parable about the lost. Three in a row. The lost sheep. What else? The lost coin. What else? The lost son. Even if there is one sheep that was lost, the shepherd had to leave the 99 and go to find that one sheep that was lost. Sometimes I'm thinking, if I were the shepherd, maybe I don't need to go to find that one lost sheep. Why? I just need to wait for several months and I will have more than 100. Why do I care with that one lost sheep? I'm a businessman. I will waste time going for one month, two or one week or two days or three days looking for that one lost sheep. I can have more than 100 if I'm patient and I wait only for a few months later. Why should I go to find that one lost sheep? But the Bible says that shepherd went out because for God, it is not about the number of people who are following him. It is about who is following him. It is not about the crowd, but it is about someone among the crowd. When I'm speaking like this, I'm praying in my heart that if you are struggling last night to make decision for the Lord, to be baptized on this coming Sabbath, here in this auditorium, think about how God loves you so much. My sister, my brother, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We cannot hide. Jonah, even if he was thinking that he was saved, at the bottom of that ship, God found him. Even when he was thrown into the deep sea, God found him. There is no way that we can hide from the one who have come to seek and to save that was lost. Saul, who was the tallest among all the Israel gentlemen, he was taller from the soldier up if he is standing when he was appointed to be the king, he was trying to, to hide himself, but God found him. David was in the field. He was shepherding the flocks. He was not among those who were considered to be the next king of Israel, but God found him. Zacchaeus never thought that day that that day would be the most beautiful day in his life. Because God 
found him. God is seeking for us, for you, my brother, for you, my sister. We cannot hide from him. He is knocking on your door. He wants to come into our hearts. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be our savior. And he is calling you this morning. If Zacchaeus made a very strong determination that he would accept Jesus Christ, what about you? Please, what will be your answer to his calling? Please pray in your hearts. I'm inviting you to have a personal prayer in your hearts. When you pray, I think you will sense the voice of Jesus talking to you. Father in heaven, thank you so much for extending the invitation for salvation for each and every one of us. Please listen to these individual and personal prayers. Please convince ourselves of the truth and of the salvation. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to thank God for that very timely message. God has spoken to us through his servant. And mine is to extend if there's any who would want to join the team to be baptized, please. Even as the others will be leaving, we won't ask you to remain. Of course, the number is continue going. Don't be the last, but the Lord is looking to you and you cannot hide from him. Kindly, if you are here and you are listening to me and you know you have that desire in your heart, when others will be leaving, kindly remain so that we will prepare you for that baptism. Number two, we are trying as we can to keep almost all of us inside here. We are trying. So we ask you to cooperate with us. When you come, if you are a faculty and a staff, we want you to sit here, unless otherwise. And those still the students, some are seeing them in the congregation, please we want you to sit here. And when you come, do not let some seats remain empty when there are people who would want to be inside. So I want to ask you again, kindly, when you come, take the most front seat and do not leave any seat vacant. Last but not least, when we come to the church, I'm very happy with the most of us who are here, we come knowing we've come before the Lord. But there's some of us still who comes with the things we would not want to be done in the church, kindly. Desist from it. We know that when we come to the church, we don't come with those funny caps and those hoods. I'm making that announcement again. Kindly, when we come to the church, come well. Most of us come with their Bibles, and I like the decorum that we have in the church. And may God bless you. <laughs>